Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a look at the changes we're expecting to happen in the Episode 6 update of Ragnarok Mobile Eternal Love. The release of Episode 6 in the C server has already been announced that it will be available on the 30th of October. This is also the first year anniversary of the C server and I'd like to take this moment to thank you guys for your support for this channel. It's already been a year of Ragnarok Mobile and you guys' continued support means the world to me. So again, thank you so so much. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have the opening of a new major city, Lighthausen. We've already explored the Lighthausen maps along with the new dungeons, monsters, MVPs, and the cards they drop in one of our previous videos. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll have the video linked down below. The main story quest of Lighthausen will become available for level 120 adventurers and will start in Frontera. Second, we have a brand new job class, which is the Super Novice class. They can use all the skills of other classes, which you can combine to have a powerful skill set. A novice can change to a Super Novice at base level 80, and then change to Ultima Novice at job level 70. It can also be unlocked using the multi-job system, which will give a bit bonus. Stay tuned on my channel for updates on the recommended build for the Super Novice class. Next, the maximum base and job level will be increased. Maximum base level will now be level 130, and maximum job level for the third class will now be level 70. Don't worry as a new job extension won't require killing any more Revenant or World Boss for Breath of Death. Once you've reached job level 60, you'll get a new breakthrough quest. Next, we have new mounts for all classes. These new class-exclusive mounts can be obtained after changing to the third job and completing the mount quest from the Pantera Mount Merchant NPC. They're available in different colors and can be purchased using 1,680,000 Zenny or 198 BCC. After purchasing the corresponding mount for your class, the mount can be available for all classes to ride. So if your character has a multi-job for a ranger and warlock, your ranger can ride the exclusive mount for warlocks and vice versa. Here are the mounts, the corresponding classes which can unlock the mount quest, and the materials needed to unlock them. For the pouring mount, it can be unlocked by the Super Novice class. The materials needed are 500 Christmas Garland and free Light Grano. For the King Lion mount, it can be unlocked by the Rune Knight and Royal Guard class. The materials needed are 5 Dragon Scale and 100 Orcish Voucher. For the Savage Mount, it can be unlocked by the Mechanic and Genetic class. The materials needed are 3 Star Crumb and 400 Armor Shard. For the Galleon Mount, it can be unlocked by the Guilton Cross and Shadow Chaser class. The materials needed are 3 Biotite and 500 Necklace of Oblivion. For the Ostrich Mount, it can be unlocked by the Ranger, Minstrel, and Wanderer class. The materials needed are 3 Fang of Garm and 500 Harpy's Feather. For the Alpaca Mount, it can be unlocked by the Archbishop and Shura class. The materials needed are 3 Crystal Mirror and 1000 Witch Stardust. And lastly, for the Ninetale Mount, it can be unlocked by the Warlock and Sorcerer class. The materials needed are 5 Pearl and 1000 Burning Hair. Take note that only the Royal Guards and Rune Knights can use skills while riding these mounts due to their Cavalry Combat skill. Next, a new feature called Advanced Rune System will be implemented which is very different from the Acer Monument runes. These new runes will greatly improve the stats and skills of each job class. To activate the Advanced Rune System, you need to reach base level 80 and complete the quest to get a Coffer of Rune. Then obtain the new runes by purchasing from this NPC in Frontera using Zenny, Glow Metal, Contribution, and Gold Medals or by completing the new Thanatos Tower instance. There is also a BCC option for those who want to spend real money. Stay tuned on my channel for a detailed explanation for the advanced rune system. Next, another feature added in Episode 6 is the Homeland Design System, wherein you can decorate your house with furniture that give unique stat bonuses and a variety of new features. You can also invite friends to visit your home and improve your reputation. To get a house, you need to reach base level 70, complete a quest to obtain a furniture storage box, and pay a fee of 1 million zenny. We'll talk about the complete details of the Homeland Design System in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. But as a tip, save up on your assistant medals to buy building materials from the tour assistant. 
Next, we have a new 12-player party mode called the Alliance. You can upgrade your party into an Alliance in the party panel. In common maps, the Alliance is split as party 1 and 2, but in instances, players in each party may see each other. Next, a new 12-player instance called Tanatos Tower will be added which has 4 difficulty modes. Perfect cooperation will be the key to success in this new challenge. Next, the bulletin board quest system has been simplified which will now only show 5 quests daily instead of 10. Just complete 3 out of the 5 quests to obtain various rewards. In relation to this change, the mercenary's mission item may now clear daily quests of any level. Next, completing rifts has also been simplified wherein you won't need to travel around the world to touch rifts. You just need to go to the assistant panel and click the meatballs to complete all rifts immediately. Next, players who have reached base level 120 will now have new daily quests in Lighthausen. Completing these quests will unlock new exclusive headgears. Next, we will have 10 new pets which can be obtained by catching or pet fusion. If you want to know more about these pets, I have my episode 6 pets video linked down below. Next, we have the new armor synthesis feature wherein you can combine armors for higher stats and effects, similar to the mechanics of the weapon synthesis. We've talked about all the 22 new armor synthesis in our previous video, which includes a comparison of stats and effects with the base armor and the required materials. If you haven't watched that yet, I have the video link down below. Next, we have the optimization of the adventure handbook wherein you can now easily find what to unlock using the red dot. In addition, you no longer need to remove your headgears and costumes from the Adventure Handbook if you're going to use them as a costume. In the new costume system, you can wear everything deposited in the Adventure Handbook with just one click. The Adventure Book will now include weapons, shields, and mounts. Next, the free stages near the music box in the Pantera South can now be used as sort of a fitting room wherein you can try on all the costumes, weapons, and headgears for free. Next, we can now add filters when taking pictures using the in-game camera. Some of the new filters may change the color to black and white, add dreamy fantasy effect, blur the background like in portrait mode, or add effects like bokeh. Next, the Feast Gacha Fantasy Generator machine will be replaced by the Tarot Card Gacha. Basically, you'll get headgear vouchers and different colors of costumes after certain numbers of rolls. Getting to the last roll will grant amount, but this will require approximately 5,000 Big Cat coin. Next, some existing equipment will now have additional tier upgrades. This is the reason why we're seeing an increase in price of the Niles bracelet, base guitar, Chimedi whip, and surging magic robe these past few days. In addition, there will be a new weapon synthesis for the bass guitar, Chimedu Whip, and Spell Book of Ice. Next, the maximum level for guild praying cards is further increased from 30 to 40. Next, we have four new Revenant MVPs added, the Mistress, Ferroni, the Tartarus, and Spashar. Next, offhand equipment can now be enchanted using more coins. And lastly, we have new cards for the merchant class which cost 30 million zenny and 198 BCC. Alright, so far we've gone through the changes coming in episode 6. This is based on what was released in the China server, so it's more likely that we'll get similar updates. I hope this video was helpful in giving you an idea on what to look forward to in this coming episode. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this video. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.